Bartered Bride Overture by Smetana, and that is one of the two excerpts needing um, to be prepared for the 2024 VBODA All Virginia Orchestra auditions. My name is Julian Schwartz. I am the professor of cello at Shenandoah Conservatory here in Winchester, Virginia. I'm coming to you from my teaching studio, and I've been working on these excerpts to see if I could uh, offer some help to those around the state who are preparing these difficult excerpts. This first Bartered Bright Overture is one of the most difficult and demanding um, cello section excerpts uh, and solo excerpts that appears very frequently in orchestral auditions. So this will serve you well in your future um, in taking auditions. The difficulty uh, with this in the opening is to get the accents after a slur. So what I do is I practice going slowly on a down bow and then putting first finger weight, getting my elbow a little bit up to get the, sort of a flick into the accent. And then I change the bow before the next accent. And then this is the one exception I make. I have a down bow right on um, the fourth accent because I need the up bow me to the non legato sforzando um, on the uh, fifth bar. So um, this slow motion and in the non legato bar, non legato doesn't mean that the bow has to come off the string, it just means there needs to be a slight bit of space in between each note, which can come from more releasing. So instead of, for example, it would be, and what I'm doing is I'm combining sort of flexibility in my fingers and my wrist with sort of minimal arm movement. So what we can do is we can analyze the wrist moving up and down, the fingers moving side to side, and then the upper arm moving out, and the whole arm, and they all give you slightly different strokes. For this non legato, I would, I would um, especially in the louds, I would use the wrist, and then for the subito piano later, I would use mostly the fingers, actually. And that takes some practice, but I think it's, I think it's important for this excerpt. Uh, I try to avoid adjacent string crossing, so instead of... I try to, when possible, put one and three on G and A. The same one string lower. And instead of... I would do putting the fourth finger on A for the last. When you get to the C string, it's very important that you use a very minimal bow. Because if you use too much, you hear the overtones. And we don't want to hear the overtones, we want to hear the accents. So I'm using almost no bow, actually, to try to get the string to ring, but it's very difficult when you're going back and forth. So that's another added difficulty. I try to use the principles of adjacent finger shifts in small intervals to make the fingering for this, this passage before the rests, where instead of going or one, one, I actually shift on the small interval of a half step between E natural and F, going from three to two. One, three, two, then back on the E. fluid between shifting between one and sorry between two and three um, that'll help the fluidity of this passage then I would not feel the need to count the rests in your um, in your video obviously for 36 bars so we will then meet the the next passage which I choose to play on the G string because it's very difficult to play the middle strings on the cello without hitting other strings so what I do instead of playing and you hear the open A and D I rest my finger my first finger over the strings, so instead of instead of hearing when you can hear all the other strings, I actually mute them with my first finger just resting lightly on the string, not pressing down, so it sounds 
there's still a little bit of noise, but you have to get the fortissimo. So you have to prioritize which is more important, the cleanliness or the fortissimo in the video. So, forzando, forzando. And then at this point, I go to the open string. Um, and at this point, that's the most important moment for the dynamic, which is the subito piano, and it remains subito piano for the rest of the excerpt. So, sforzando. And then we go directly to a bow stroke, which is more of the feet of the fingers going back and forth, which is basically the thumb and the first finger um, grasping at, at, at each other to get the bow moving side to side, or the wrist moving up and down at an angle. And the angle comes from the pronation of the arm, which means that you have the elbow a little bit higher, so that instead of going up and down this way, you're actually going up and down side to side, which looks which gives a nice stroke, I think, to the subito piano. Uh, I would hold full quarters, two, three, in the long um, quarter notes, and then I would retake after that sforzando at the end of the fourth line. Um, the principles of shifting on half steps apply to the rest of the passage in the subito piano because I'm trying to, when possible, four, four, Two, four, one, one. Sometimes exceptions need to be made. In the playthrough at the beginning of the of the video, you'll see that I don't always shift on half steps, but I try to, when possible, to keep it clean. In the fourth bar of the fifth line, um, I do one, four, two, one, one, two, three, one, three. And then I shift at the middle of the last bar of that line, back to the four, to one, back to four, one, 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 four, the same exact passage, one, two, three, then I go to open A, the second to last bar of the sixth line, and then I do a fingering that works for me, but there are other options. Shift to one on the E natural. Two, four, two, three, two, four, two, over. So I'll demonstrate that once more. This is halfway through the second to last bar of the sixth line. One, two, one, four, two, four. Now the harmonic, because it's so fast you won't even be able to hear it. Two on the harmonic, three on the B flat. Harmonic gives you time to get back to four on the G, F with two, and then over to the D string just for one note so that you can get to the A string for the beginning of the seventh line. A, open A on the third bar of the seventh line. Same thing, ring. over for just to the D string with four for one note. Now the very last line needs to start on a three. Three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three. And it's important for this entire passage to not get too loud. Because you need to stay piano um, to show the, the committee, the jury, that you have uh, the restraint. And when you go to the A string, it's important that you lighten up the bow. Um, for instance, if we're playing. We need to lighten when we get to the A string, for example. So that is the, the Barter Bride excerpt, and um, I think the suggested uh, half note equals 144 is a good tempo marking, but um, I think you'll be more successful if it is cleaner and slightly slower than to uh, rush through at the tempo indicated. The second excerpt is a much more lyrical, and I think here you have a little more freedom to be musical and to, to um, showcase the line and your understanding of, of the musical line. This is the Dotsauer 113 Studies, Book 2, the 42nd Etude on Dante con Moto. Um, so I'm going to play this one, um, and then we'll just discuss a little bit of my choices. <laughs>
um, the bow usage is actually, is actually sort of the hidden key to this, which is that I think it's important to adhere to all the slurs. Usually slurs are not bowings, but in an entry written by a cellist, slurs are usually indicated um, as, as bowings. So there are a lot of tendencies of the bow that need to be worked, worked against in this etude, and a lot of bow um, techniques. For the first bar, you can easily play open A and play it all in first position. I opted to shift on this half step to hit F and then go up the D string. Right? So that um, is, a, is a personal decision to avoid the open A and to avoid the string crossings, but um, uh, either way is fine. And then the second bar is important for the bow usage. Enough bow on the down bow so that you can have enough for the height of the hairpin, which is the double stop of sixth um, uh, F natural to D natural. So the most bow needs to be used on the, the top of that. Um, and I go 4 2 to 3 1 to 1 open. And remember, Minor sixths need to be slightly larger. Major sixths need to be slightly smaller in the intonation. So when I'm playing open D and B flat, the tendency is to play, which is the B flat very close to the nut. Instead, we want to open that interval up to sound uh, more beautiful. So then we make diminuendo to the frog, which is very difficult. And we need to bring up the imbalance, the bow using the bow other two fingers, the third and fourth on the bow, and then this one, you can also, all in first position, but I opted to go to shift on the half step again, then we have the big crescendo, so that means the beginning of that, that th fourth bar, we have to spend a lot of bow um, discreetly to get... And in the video, I used sort of... Um, the progressive uh, approach to to sixth, which is three one for major sixths, and um, uh, uh, two one for minor sixths. But you can also do the indicated fingering, which is one two, four two, and then one two. So um, then we come to, and we want to show what's called the contour of the line. So. more bow and I use more vibrato. Uh, so we have this sort of closed position. Now here, you can either stay on two or move to four. I find it easier to stay on two and then to shift for the augmented fourth, a, uh, F, uh, sorry, E flat to A natural, which is uh, two, three. I find that to be the easiest. Remember that the tritone needs to be slightly closer together, so that means the fingers actually have to be slightly larger of a spacing. So instead of, uh, we don't want to hear this when the second and third finger are too close together. We want to hear, which is sort of a more pleasing tritone if there could be such a thing. So, um, then we do the same exact spacing again, but slightly larger because it's lower on the fingerboard. Um, uh, uh, actually nine notes for win one bow. So we have to make sure to spend the bow judiciously. The most bow on the E flat. Then we slow down the bow as we get to the frog. So this we need to make sure that the bow is equal um, weight over two strings. So, I stay in first position. Put a little accent on that, but the height of the hairpin is also the next downbeat, so we have to accentuate both. With the bow, with a little fast, slow, fast. And in this switch, we need to lighten the bow a little bit, so we have time for the first finger to get over to the next string cleanly. Now, the next. Because of the uh, 
tie over the bar line, we have to use four for the F natural. Well, either shift four four or one one on the D. I find four four to be the easiest. And when I put down the first finger here, it often results in a little bump on the F because of the changing. D string goes lower, so that means it lowers the bow into the A string, which creates a little crunch. So when you do this, I would try to lighten the bow a little bit out of the string to, uh, to combat that. And then I also do a little bit of a break, even though it's slurred, to disguise the fact that I have to move the third finger over and have the E flat by itself. Um, then the next, uh, make sure that accidentals carry over, such as the B natural in the second bar of the fourth line. Um, and make sure we adhere to the to the key signature of two flats. Uh, and then this is all very natural for the bow because the down bow makes diminuendo to the tip, and then crescendo to the down bow. to the forte, which lands on a down. How convenient. Now we're here on the C string in the fifth line and the first bar, and then we need to make a little bit of a, an emphasis on the G, and we need to leave enough room at the tip of the bow to go all the way back and then get a nice sound. So... I do is I bring the arm forward in a little bit of a semicircle or a half moon you could think about so I can get over to the A string with minimal lifting of my shoulder. And then you can do any sorts of fingerings um, uh, for, for these sixths. Now for the bend staccato it's difficult to get accents when the note of note length stays the same. So I'd encourage you to elongate the note. So instead of, um, which can sound a little bit um, uh, too angular, I would go uh, make sure we're not squeezing with the thumb when we're playing these double stops. So, and to exacerbate the difference between the accent and the non-accent, we play the open strings a little bit uh, lighter. so fast is what I referred earlier to in the, in the Barter Bride is not a spiccato stroke, it's, it's more of a staccato stroke, meaning that the whole arm is sort of, because it can't have such much flexibility because then it doesn't have the rhythmic integrity. So I hope this uh, tutorial helped you, and again, this is uh, Julian Schwartz from Shenandoah Conservatory. Uh, please visit us, and if you'd like to, um, to explore uh, some more pedagogical ideas or more cello playing tips, uh, please come to the campus and uh, visit us. Thanks. <laughs>